Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back, and today I have for you something a little bit different. With 7.1 on its way with its changes to PvP, I want to discuss each role and my hopes for them going forward. Feel free to discuss down below what changes you would like to see coming in 7.1, as I am always curious to find out what others think. Thank you all for tuning in, enjoy the video, and I shall see you all in the next one. Let us begin with everyone's favorite, The Dark Knight. The most hated yet most necessary role, which has remained largely unchanged since 6.1. The Dark Knight has seen increased playtime over the past six months, and there is no other role in PvP right now that causes the same level of rage. I myself have had people telling me I need to be banned for occasionally playing the Dark Knight, and if there is anything that I have learned, it is that the Dark Knight is possibly the worst solo pick for PvP. Inside of Crystalline Conflict, they are a rare sight. You have to play damn near perfect to get things done. But if they want to, the enemy team can completely lock you out from playing the game. 90% of their playtime is seen within Frontline, all because of one ability, the Salted Earth, which draws in all nearby enemies towards the Dark Knight, making them the best possible pick for setting up plays, and is the main reason they are seen within every match, and are highly abused by pre-made groups. In my mind, there are currently two major issues with the Dark Knight. Firstly is the ability to multi-stack Salted Earth. In 7.1, I would love to see a new ruling, which specifies targets pulled by the drawing effect of Salted Earth cannot receive the same effect for a set period of time, somewhere between 5 and 10 seconds. This will nerf the Dark Knight spam, granting some breathing room between pulls. Without nerfing the Dark Knight specifically, I know many want Salted Earth to be removed. But the issue with that is that the Dark Knight's kit is designed to work around the Salted Earth. They would need to be reworked entirely. And the second major issue with the Dark Knight is the community, and it is only getting worse. I have seen players give up and say GG at the mere sight of a Dark Knight. Others will straight up refuse to engage against them, to then only complain that Dark Knight is broken. It is no secret that right now, playing Dark Knight solo is complete hell. 90% of games your team will not follow up. They refuse to engage with you. I get matches where an ally will mark me, making it easier to keep track and follow up only for those angry players to unmark me on cooldown, even going out of their way to tell the team to let the Dark Knight die, which is only made funnier when they rage that we lost the round. Dark Knights are the most hard-focused players in PvP, and are rather easy to shut down. But again, the only issue is players refuse to try. Monks and warriors can kidnap them from their teams and shut them down. A samurai is a 4-meta counter. Ninjas can stun lock and give chase. A scholar can heavily hinder their healing, whereas the Reaper can forcibly take control of their character. And jobs such as Black Mages, Bards and Red Mages with standout crowd control can prevent them from even diving in. Without Dark Knights, coordinated teams would only dominate further, as random alliances would run around spread out and confused, never taking battles. My hope for 7.1 is to change the Salted Earth ruling, keep the job the way it is, and give the role a few extra abilities, which then grant the Dark Knight more options in how to play outside of just Salted Earth pools. As currently playing outside of a group, the Dark Knight is a three-star difficulty job, as there is so much you must manage, while at the same time, juggling the RNG of whether or not your team will play alongside you. The warrior right now is perhaps the most balanced of the four tanks, which suits those who have an aggressive playstyle. Their ability to mass stun, self-sustain and kidnap targets have made them a stable pick in both Frontline and Crystalline Conflict. Ever since patch 6.1, I would rate the warrior as a two-star difficulty. You need an understanding of enemy roles and the confidence to dive in. Their insane self-sustain can make up greatly for any misplays. Going into 7.1, perhaps the warrior could benefit from more single-target priority. Your limit break is amazing for shutting down guards and making you completely immune to crowd control. This also grants access to the Fell Cleave, your most powerful single-target ability. But outside that, Warrior's single target damage is just no threat. You can stand there as a black mage and simply out DPS them. Maybe Warriors could use something similar to Bard, where using their single target rotation could reset the cooldown of a select action further. What we do not need is more self sustain. That would simply make them a nightmare inside of Crystalline Conflict. If we buff this role too much, they could become the next Dark Knight. Paladins have had their ups and downs since 6.1. They have been both underwhelming and at other times have caused issues inside a frontline. Back when their cover ability allowed duos to capture any objective inside Seal Rock and Onsohakir without contest. 
As of right now, the Paladin is in a pretty decent spot. The cover action works wonders with any other class. Their ability to stall is unrivaled, and the damage output I feel is just right. I would class the Paladin as a one-star difficulty, as it is rather easy to pick up and learn. Going into 7.1, I would love to see new actions that interact with the cover ability. Maybe one that speeds up action recovery times for the target who is tethered. Perhaps one that increases the tether target's damage while slowly eating away at the Paladin's health. Similar to Dance Partner, but with a payoff. What if the Paladin had the ability to slowly siphon their own limit break charge over to their tether target? That could make for some interesting plays, which comes at the cost of a Paladin's stalling ability. And last up for the tanking rolls is the Gunbreaker, another three-star difficulty tank. But however, I find it to be the most enjoyable tanking role. Played right, a Gunbreaker will never die, and since 6.1 has received multiple needed buffs. The Gunbreaker has not received equal amounts of playtime, due to its complexity over roles such as the Dark Knight. And honestly, the junction system is still a mess. 80% of the time, you go with tank junction, 20% DPS, and the healing junction you just don't use, made worse by the fact that you must be targeting the correct enemy type to gain access to abilities. In 7.1, I hope they remove the targeting feature and turn the free junctions into separate buttons. Keep the time limit between switching, but give us the chance to change on the fly without a prerequisite. Overhauling the junction system would be the key to seeing more gunbreakers in PvP. The rest of the kit works wonderfully, and the limit break is pure satisfaction. But I do also believe that the healer junction ability needs to also be changed. A simple action change can be huge for a job in PvP. After all, it worked wonders for the Reaper. On to the physical DPS. Starting with my personal favorite being the Monk. This being our first free star for the mini rolls, and ever since 6.1, has received several small buffs and nerfs to its balancing. The Monk is one of those underappreciated rolls. Many base a player's contribution simply on their kill count and high damage. And while the Monk is capable of some fairly high damage, they focus more on singling out targets, with their highest contribution coming from shutting down Dark Knights and other tough roles. It is also very easy to lose kill claim, as the Monk's big DPS rotation ending with their limit break. While usually dealing 90% of the damage yourself, the long animation often loses you the kill to be claimed by another. In 7.1, the Monk could benefit greatly with a tweak to its limit break, give the Monk a higher chance to claim their own kill credit. With possible new abilities being added, I would like to see the Riddle of Fire and Wind added, turning into their long-range attacks, just like with their PvE variants. This would give the Monk different options when it comes to engaging. The additional effect of Wind could also follow the Wind Resonance bonus given by the Thunderclap, while the Riddle of Fire could also follow the Rising Phoenix's additional ability, granting Fire Resonance. Next, the Dragoon, by far the easiest and one of the most DPS heavy of the melee rolls. This is the only melee I would deem a one-star roll. Easy to learn and very easy to find value with. Dragoons are by far one of the most played PvP rolls, thanks to their extremely powerful burst rotation, some decent movement, and their extremely powerful limit break, which with the correct setup, can wipe entire alliances. In terms of their kit, I believe they nailed it first try. It feels great to play and flows perfectly. If anything needs changing in 7.1, I would like to see a power shift in how devastating their limit break is, but only for frontline. Inside of Crystalline Conflict, the Dragoon's current power is just fine. However, weakening the power of Sky Shattered Dive inside of frontline would be a refreshing sight. If the Dragoon's explosive power is brought closer in line with other roles, the player base would then have more reasons to try other jobs. This would also be a nice shift away from the meta, hopefully moving away from the Dark Knight Dragoon Rush which you see in almost every game. The Ninja, a fan favorite amongst many inside of PvP. Their uniqueness comes from being a fully hybrid role, not just close combat, but also range, and their ability to become a tank and self-heal, topped off with evasive abilities. The power of their limit break has led to ninjas seeing more playtime, as they can instantly kill any target whose health drops below 50%, with a second unique effect, refunding their limit break should the target die within a set time period. This allows ninjas to chain multi-kills, making them a solid counterpick to the meta. I would say the ninja has earned a two-star difficulty. They can be rather tough to learn, but has so many different ways in which you can approach situations. Going into 7.1, I am unsure what a ninja needs. Their kit is so vast. The only thing I could think of is a possible nerf to their Huton, 
which currently grants a 16,000 barrier and 25% bonus movement speed. Right now, your entire alliance could swarm a ninja, only for them to still escape. Dialing back their tankiness would not hurt the ninja's playstyle, but would increase the likelihood of claiming the kill on those who overstay their welcome. Onto the samurai, the one midi roll that all players must respect, since their limit break can easily one-shot any target after being struck under the effects of Chiten, which also makes them another wonderful pick to counter the meta. I would also place these samurai as a two-star roll, simple to learn, but can be a struggle to execute their actions. Their rotation is slow but hard-hitting, and their mass bind can be devastating. Going into 7.1, I don't yet believe these samurai would need a change, as they have already mentioned that they are fine-tuning abilities, which hopefully means, when you see a target receive the effects of Kazuchi, you can just limit break them then and there, as currently what you see on screen is most often not registering. Improving on their Chi-10 limit break combo would fix the frustrations of playing the samurai. Next up we have the Reaper, my close second favorite pick. In patch 6.1 the role had a unique identity, but was lacking in execution, as the full potential was locked behind stacks of immortal sacrifice, obtained from one single action, but most commonly obtained through kills and assists. That ruling placed Reapers in a weird spot. If your team were great there was no issue, but simply put, a bad team prevented you from getting kills and assists. This has since been fixed by changing out one ability and replacing it with the guillotine, which combos right after your Grim Swarth. Two great AoE abilities with a heavy crowd control. This new ability to tag multiple targets now means any players your team kills will grant you stacks of immortal sacrifice thanks to the assists, giving Reaper access to their full power more often. Right now for patch 7.1, I cannot see the Reaper needing any changes. It will benefit from the current changes coming, but let me know down below what you think the Reaper could use. And lastly for the midi rolls we have the Viper, the latest addition with Dawn Trail, and is easily as of right now a free star pick. It is suffering right now from its limit break. While fast attacking, the damage is delayed going through. I would imagine into patch 7.1 we should see an update addressing this issue, and I would not be surprised to see tweaks and damage boosts here and there. The Viper right now feels just like how the Reaper did before receiving the ability change, just one good patch away from being amazing. For the rest of their kit I have no complaints, it is fun. You can tank and bait out abilities with snake scales, and your uncoiled fury is hard hitting. I think before any major changes, we need to see improvements to the limit break, since it would be very easy to make the viper overtuned. Onto the physical range, let us begin with the bard. I would rate this jump a 2 star rating, simple to learn and execute, but really shines the more you understand about other roles. As of right now the damage is fine, if we buffed it you would start seeing the lobbies filled with just range classes once again. The bard is a solid pick to hang back, and to pump out some impressive damage. Your AoE abilities and silence crowd control work wonders both playing with and against Dark Knights. One of the standout abilities is the Bard's capability to boost damage, prevent crowd control, and even boost limit break charge for others in the Alliance. Going into 7.1, I would enjoy seeing this played into further. The Bard fits well as a supporting role. Played right, they provide so much for the team, while at the same time Bards are rather easy to deal with, so balance-wise right now they are in a good spot. The Machinist is everyone's favorite range role. I would also class this as a two-star role, known in the earlier days for their chainsaw to have a set percent chance to one-shot players. This has since gone, and has received tweaks here and there. Whether or not you play solo or as a group, the Machinist is an ideal pick for either. Your ability to drill combo into your limit break, seemingly one-shotting squishy targets is pure bliss. My only complaint is with the four-part rotation, consisting of drill, bioblaster, Air Anchor and Chainsaw. For me personally, I would like to see Bio Blaster as its own separate button. That Poison plus Mass Heavy is a risk-reward play that forces out Purifies, although you have to give up your Drill to gain access, which is one of your best abilities, seeing as you can deal 20,000 damage right for a player's guard. With the improvements to how actions perform, I could easily see the Machinist becoming a menace in patch 7.1. And lastly we have Dancers, again I would say is a 2-star pick and a personal favorite of mine inside of Crystalline Conflict. Your mobility is unrivaled, allowing you to be a pest in the backline. In frontline, it shines mostly with meta groups, using your limit break to drop guards, and control players for that easy burst. The role does indeed feel quite fluid to play, but I rarely play it inside of frontline. For patch 7.1, I do not have an opinion on how they should move forward with this class, 
If you have any ideas, however, let me know. I would like to see what you all come up with. On to the casters, starting with the Black Mage, an absolute powerhouse, with the most crowd control in PvP. Ideal for those of you who enjoy big numbers and fancy explosions. The movement is pretty decent, being able to jump between both enemies and allies, and is easily the most picked casting role, and has earned itself a 2-star rating. In 7.1, I would love to see a PvP version of their ley lines that could provide utility or faster recast timers, something to give the Black Mage the ability to hold ground. I do hope there is no incoming nerfs, as I feel the Black Mage balancing right now is just perfect. The Summoner, the one-star comfort pick for casting roles, and there is nothing wrong with that. A perfect beginner role for those new to frontline. A role I was happy to see not repeat the past mistakes. For those who were not playing PvP during the Heavens War time, Summoner back then was the most broken PvP role to exist in this game. Landing 40 to 60 kill games was very common. The current 6.1 build allows you to hang back while still supporting your team. Should a target need finishing, you can quickly dash in. If anything needs changing in 7.1, it is the Phoenix Summon. I would like to see the Phoenix maybe cast detrimental effects have Bahamut for the raw DPS, while the Phoenix could be a more tactical play, if it per se slows down recast timers. Perhaps it could also have the Scholar mummification effect, reducing healing. It would be nice to see the Phoenix become a great counter-push option that helps out in large-scale battles. The Red Mage, easily a 3-star casting role and my personal favorite. It is the casting equivalent to the Ninja, a class that can switch between close and long range on the fly, which also includes stance switching changing between more damage to shields and healing. The Red Mage to me is one of the most slept on picks, and for that I am kind of glad. Their Limit Break can be cast upon allies. Imagine the meta, only Dragoons are replaced by Red Mages. Firstly, that Dark Knight is not going to die, and Sorted Earth is the perfect action to complement a Red Mage's Limit Break. In 7.1, I do not believe the Red Mage needs any buffs or nerfs. You are pretty well-rounded. If anything is going to be adjusted, perhaps some slight adjustments to the white shift to tweak their survivability, giving more reason to use the white stance more often. Pictomancer, the second newest addition with Dawn Trail, and a role I have deeply enjoyed. Right now, I believe it to be overtuned. Even in the most casual rounds, I can easily always hit 3 million plus damage. Their playstyle feels like a mix of the other three casters. In 7.1, what I think we need to see is a damage reduction to some of the hardest hitting skills, and compensated by shortening how long it takes to paint the next motif. As great as the Pictomancer is, the long painting times can make it very easy to miss the battle right in front of you. If we drop the damage and speed up motif usage, the Pictomancer can be with the team more often, ready to deal some huge damage. Onto the support, starting with the White Mage, easily the most played healing role since patch 6.1. Good healing, decent damage, and their Limit Break Stun and Imp combo make the White Mage a standout role and has become quite the staple pick within Crystalline Conflict. There is not much to say about the White Mage, it is what it is. The only issue I ever took was they had way too much uptime with their Imp ability. This has long been fixed to a 45 second recast time, meaning in Crystalline Conflict they can rejoin a fight fresh off spawn and not have this ability ready to go. If anything, in 7.1, maybe lean more into the buddy system Focus on the White Mage's single target supporting style. The Scholar, a role that can bring fear to the front line. Occasionally matches are stacked with Scholars, bringing their shields and mass multi-stacking damage over time. And right now the Scholar is a wonderful supporting role. Shields, speed boosts, damage boosts, and the ability to reduce enemy healing. I would rate the Scholar as a 1 star, as the role is fairly straightforward. In 7.1, I would love to see the Scholar continue to follow their supporting role. A lot of what the Scholar does is for all nearby allies, so perhaps this time, give them a way to further boost just a single target, adding decision making. For example, instead of spreading shields to everyone, instead grant one target a much stronger barrier. Instead of speed boosting the entire team by 25%, how about the option to increase a single target's movement by 35%? Things like this would add complexity to the role, and rewards good decision making. The Astro, right now is one of the main meta picks, thanks to the huge power boost provided with their limit break. Their damage right now is just fine. Looking at the scoreboards at the end of a frontline match, Astros often lead on damage. Their crowd control was nerfed early on. What I feel that fails the Astro is the card system. In 7.1, I would love to see a redesigned overhaul to the casting of cards, 
Right now, there are only three beneficial cards for your team, so it would be nice to see the Astro get access to detrimental cards. Again and again new dynamic that rewards good decision making. And finally, we have the Sage. My favorite for the healing roles. Easily a free star difficulty. I love how this class plays. The Cardia sets up a buddy system. You have good damage and decent mobility. One of my favorite plays is diving into the enemy team and dropping Limit Break at my feet. Enemy players can never resist spamming off their crowd control, which is fine, as I will be immortal within the Limit Break. In 7.1, I would love to see the Limit Break become more punishing for those who climb in, up the damage slightly, and maybe even apply a heavy effect to those who stay in for too long. That would help slow down enemies while you move and reposition your Limit Break, which currently you can place up to two times. I would love to see this get increased to free, as this would open up more play. You could dive in baiting abilities for the first placement. Then the enemy team dives, let's say your Black Mage. You can then relocate it to their position. You then have one final placement for another aggressive play or to retreat. This would not break Sage either, as these same counter options would be just as powerful as before.